Network of awareness Makes your brain coherent One of the fastest growing podcasts You can hear it 24-7 You got listeners out in London Informationalist in Paris Echo spreading out, no parrot Just dissect, digest, and share it The righteous rhymes hit the spirit Click 90 times, it won't perish Cause y'all's the mind ain't no fairy Tell like the barely our parents It's time to rise, don't get wary United minds, it's apparent Download every single errand But most ain't fit to catch it Even if they were Larry Interviews, the interludes, they into you, taking you on a journey like no other. It places you in a state of awareness. It's your fault if you hate the truth. Cause y'all even y'all always on this way, my brother. Better change your views. All praise to yeah. positive people you are now tuned in to the network of awareness podcast radio station giving you in-depth information on society and culture in america and abroad with messages of inspiration with keen insights reputable interviews and much more so now without further ado your host of the network of awareness podcast or the informationalist Peace and greetings, folks. This is all the informationalists, and we are coming to you live Thursday, June 16th, from the Tampa Bay area of Florida. This is the Network of Awareness, Season 4, Episode 24, Signs of Demise. And welcome, folks. This is Ordi Informationless, owner and founder of the Network of Awareness. And today, we have a highly, a highly impactful show for you, brothers and sisters, today. It's called Signs of Demise. And we're going to talk about the United Serpents of America. I'm going to break down the movie Dark Waters. I'm also going to break down... The different signs that show that America is falling to its demise, as it should, for all of its wickedness against humanity, against the world, against the Most High. So, if you want thought-provoking information, if you want inspirational information, if you want something that is meaningful, tune in. To the live broadcast of this network of awareness. Are you aware? Are you prepared? Do you live in fear? If so, maybe it's time to change and become more aware, not be in fear and have faith over fear. Because there's a lot of signs of demise, it's already happening here in America. And we're going to talk about it. And specifically, we're going to talk about this dark waters. So, let's go, baby. Let's make it happen. You are now tuned in to the Network of Awareness. Nothing like this. Stage 
Please just tell me what's happening to me in plain English with, without the mumbo jumbo. How you doing? All right, brothers and sisters, we have another live show of the Network of Awareness. I'm your host, or the Information List, and let's get it started. Shout outs to Brother Mauricio for all the support. Greatly appreciate you. Shout outs to all the people that are going to be coming into the live chat room. If you want to engage with some really good people that actually have a brain, join the Network of Awareness chat room. I broadcast live out of Spreaker. So if you download my shows on Apple, on Spotify, on Geo Savan, iHeartRadio, NetworkOfAwareness.com, Bullhorn, Podcast Attic, you name it, I'm on it, Pandora, Amazon, I'm there. So if you download my shows, you can still listen in live on Spreaker.com. And uh, you can be a part of this show or you can be in the chat room and just be an observer. You can also download the show at networkofawareness.com. Um, a little bit later in the chat room, I'm going to share a link where you can leave a comment, share an idea, and also put in your testimony your testament, because today is Testament Thursday. And if you want to put in a testament, you can. Now, I will get the recording button active, so that way you can record your testament. In the meantime, the link that I'm going to share is the contact section. So if you go to the contact section, you can actually leave a comment and, you know, and post something, and I will get it, and I will check on it. Also, Coming soon to TV on Roku and on the internet is networkofawareness.tv. And it's going to be awesome. And we're going to keep building and building people because at the end of the day, we all we got. And you have to remain righteous. You have to put forth righteous intentions these days because we are in spiritual warfare. And I'm not talking about religion, people. I'm talking about real spiritual warfare. I'm talking about things that are happening and have been happening for a long time. And this thing is not going to continue to just keep happening. You know, I got family members that think that the United States of America is going to exist into the year 3000. And it's such a joke. Hollywood has been so instrumental in conditioning people to believe future realities that are not going to exist because at the end of the day, Satan runs Hollywood, but Satan doesn't run the universe. So if you want to keep believing lies, because the United States is the main proponent of a long legacy of lies. If you want to embrace the lie, then go right on ahead, continue to do so. But I trust as my, as my, um, my woman says, trust the plus that if you keep thinking that way, you're going to be fucked up and ain't nobody going to be able to help you because the very people that most people, especially in this country, trust is their damn government. And, and salute to all of you people that don't because this government is not to be trusted, never has and never will be. This place is corrupt. This is one. This is the most corrupt corporation of corporations. This is this is the the worst corporation that has ever existed in in the history of corporation. So, we're going to talk about signs of demise today because when it comes to a testament, testaments are signs, right? Testaments are things that have happened that we can attest to. And I can attest as being somebody who was born, raised, and still living within the United Shenan uh, Shenanigans of America. I can tell you 
that they this place it's it's fuckery 101 and that fuckery that we've been taught many people still believe in it unfortunately and there's a few of us that don't and one of the reasons why I do what I do is to basically wake up some light in somebody that has some light that's dim and wake them up to the reality that the world that they live in is not the world that they believe it is. It's so far from that. And that's my purpose as a messenger for the Most High to deliver to you people today and hopefully tomorrow. And all praise to the Most High for giving me the ability to be a messenger and to provide a message of truth and to also bring other people that have messages of truth and understanding and have great wisdom in different fields of not just industry, but different wisdom from different walks of life. And I'm just so grateful that we have this platform. How long will this platform last? I don't know, but the most high does. All I will say is this, is that I have every intention of making the network of awareness go more global than it is now. And what I mean by that is that I am going to continue to speak this message for everybody who is ready to receive it. Because everybody needs to know what's really true and what's really false. But in order to really understand the truth, you first have to know that you're being lied to. Because if you don't know you're being lied to, then you'll never even want to know the truth because you will believe that the lie is the truth. And you will accept that darkness for your light. So, brothers and sisters, I was watching uh, Dark Waters with uh, with my queen, who's in the chat room. Shout out to my queen, Letta. Shout out to Alkaline J in the house. He's watching the movie. And um, I was watching it mostly. But we watched this movie and uh, it was very, like, it was very foretelling of the long history and this legacy of lies that's here in the United States. So you have a movie that Mark Ruffalo, Ruffalo, uh, pretty much produced and acted, was the main actor in it. He did a good job. And he played a, a guy by the name of Rob Pulley or Billy or something like that. And he was an attorney for chemical uh, corporations and stuff like DuPont and, and major, major, just major companies like Monsanto and all these companies that have very, very, very toxic chemicals. And the basis of the movie, if you haven't seen it, is that this is a type of movie where it's letting you know that the, the chemical that produces what's been known to be called, they called it Teflon, was being dumped all around the United States, especially in small areas like West Virginia, in these really small hick towns where it's very rural farmland. And it was happening since the 70s, but actually it's been happening way before that. And if you've never heard my um, show on the pharmaceutical industry, definitely check it out. It is part of uh, season four. But this, this thing with the movie, right, it's, it's, it's showing you how the water supply around the country, especially in designated areas, is very much contaminated. And some places, the, the level of contamination is far greater like in places like um, Virginia, I think it was called Parksburg or something like that. And when you are exposed to this water on a consistent basis, it creates, it has so many different chemical antigens and, and, and properties in it that are so destructive 
to the human body in so many different ways. And in the movie, they show how children were being born with deformities. This is no different than what's happening with the 5G towers for, a couple, for several decades now. Any place that has 5G towers close to it, like schools or um, communities, a lot of people, especially the children, are basically getting some form of cancer. And let me tell you how sick the United States is, when, especially when it comes to med- medicine. You've heard me talk about medical tyranny. The United States is so sick that when it comes to modern day medicine that's supposed to cure people, the very radiation that had gotten you sick in the first place and developed these cancerous cells and tumors is the very radiation that they try to treat you with to cure it. It's insane. It's insane. But it's a a testament to what this country represents. I want you to really think about that. The very radiation that most people get sick from and develop some form of cancer is the same type of radiation they try to treat you to cure it. When now... Thanks to the righteous brothers and sisters that have promoted that the very herbs, plants from the most high, from this earth, from this land, has all provided us with every possible healing property known to mankind. And there's been plenty of people that have healed themselves with all types of fruits and vegetables, and herbs, and spices, and and oxygen, and sunlight. All of these natural things when it comes to nature. But yet, if you decide to go through man to be healed from any dis-ease in your life, you're going to the same people that created your dis-ease in the first place. This country is a big lie. And in the movie, Rob, the attorney, is very much disgusted after a while. He starts to realize that this filtering uh, the water with chemicals and and putting chemicals into into the land he realized that this th- this stuff is wicked and evil. And it was horrible, horrible. How many people have died from the contamination and continue, and continue to do so? And you still have companies like DuPont that are just paying out millions, if not billions of dollars. But you want to know the crazy part? Just like the pharmaceuticals. When they pay out these lawsuits that they've been paying out for decades upon decades, that it doesn't affect them. It's like if if somebody is murdering people, what happens to that person? That person gets put in jail, and depending on what state they're in, a lot of times they get executed. So why are none of the people that are with DuPont or Monsanto or Kellogg's or... um? USA Foods and all these other places that are literally putting stuff into their food, into their products that they're producing. Why is it that they don't go to jail? Why is it that they always wind up paying a fine? It's because They have so much money to pay lobbyists that actually lobby in Congress for them to get certain laws passed that protect them. Why? Because the very government that represents this so-called country, which really is a corporation, is always going to speak and protect the best interest of the corporations of the big corporation known as the United States of America. And then they get protected 
so that they can kill and destroy more and still make money. That's why paying a couple of million dollars every single year doesn't affect them because they're still going to make hand over fist. It's, it, it's, a, it's, it's such a minute, it's such a fraction of the type of wealth when it comes to monetary wealth that these people generate on a daily basis. So for somebody that's winning that lawsuit, it's a lot of money. But at what cost? Because isn't somebody that does something bad supposed to go to jail so that they don't do it no more? But somehow companies like DuPont, like in this film, continue to exist and continue to bring basically death to America. This is just one sign of America's demise. Because I truly believe that you can only be wicked for so long. And America has been wicked as far as its ideology for over 500 years. And their time is nigh, baby. Their demise is coming. And it brings me great joy. See, people, when I say I want to see this country fall, I'm not saying that you that's listening to this podcast, I want you to suffer. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I, I can't wait for the entire system to collapse. I can't wait for the energy that resonates here, that fuels this place to be what it is, to completely dissipate and never be again. It's not in my power to do that. And even if we all got together as one, we still wouldn't do it. Because at the end of the day, the only force that can do this and make this happen is the most high. And I know that because we are in the days of revelations, that this stuff is all going to happen. And everything is right in our face. I'm going to play something on my TV real quick because I had, at the end of the, uh, of the movie, he has, um, he wins several cases to win people a lot of money. And then we'll talk more about the movie. So let's take a look. In the first of these cases, so he had many, many cases. Rob won a jury award of $1.6 million. So let's see what else he won. In the second, he won $5.6 million. In the third, he won 12.5. So as you can see, DuPont finally settled all 3,535 cases for six. What was that? Wow. That was for six. What was it? $6,700.7 million or more. Hold on. Let's my, uh, my TV here lost some, um, looks like they lost some internet. All right. So my TV's acting up. See, <laughs> that's the dark forces. It says the PFOA is believed to be in the blood of virtually every living creature of the planet. Isn't that crazy that this chemical called PFOA is in there like that? It's insane, people. It's funny how my uh, my uh, movie doesn't want to play now. It keeps buffering. What a coinkydink. But in the movie, the, the attorney Rob, he winds up acquiring a, a really, really crazy illness. All right. That messes with him. And um, he winds up losing the oxygen to his brain, passing out, gets in the hospital. And they find he has these very, very unique disease that winds up being very prominent in people's lives after some time. And then his studies actually help to further improve the study of this disease. And 
I thought the movie was great because it just goes to show you what this country represents, man. I think people have gotten too caught up in patriotism. I think patriotism has become this idea of righteousness. But what I the way I perceive patriotism, I, I perceive it as a as a delusion. I, I perceive it as like an act of protecting something that doesn't really matter. I had people, I don't give two fucks about the United States of America. I don't give two fucks about this government because this government doesn't represent me or you. This government doesn't represent any of my best interests, never has. And as far as the country and its constitution and its declaration of independence, please, it's all bullshit. And see, many people don't even know that the indigenous, indigenous melanated people that lived here in harmony, the very European bloodlines that came here to distort and pervert took the structure from the indigenous people that gave it to them in order to build a government under a document called the United States Constitution or the Constitution of the United States. That wasn't created by the so-called forefathers when you do your history check, your real history. Everything we've been fed is a lie. Benjamin Franklin didn't discover electricity. Thomas Jefferson wasn't a noble man. George Washington was a piece of shit. And he was wicked to the core. And I found it interesting that in Assassin's Creed video game back in the days when I used to play, they they have a bonus um, thing that you can purchase where you actually fight. George Washington, and he's wicked. He get he has the apple. It's a golden apple that gives you all this power. It's the, the the it's like the it's it's the essence of of all power of life. And he takes control of it, and you got to battle him to take it away from his from his clutches. And I thought it was very interesting that a movie like a a, a video game company like Assassin's Creed does that. But as we all know, and some of us, if you don't know. Video game companies are very much into um, being part of Masonic orders. And it doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's a part of it. It's just the, the executive branch usually is. And they are very privy to gaining um, much of this information. But when it comes to the United Serpents of America, there's a lot of signs that are pointing to its demise. Because of movies like Dark Water, Dark Waters, it just goes to show you how long this disgusting behavior of wickedness has been going on. But when you look at the United States of America, it's that very wicked behavior that built this society. And when you look at how America was built, especially from a financial perspective, it's like America was built off of slavery. Slavery is the nucleus commodity in the wealth distribution and generation of the United States of America. And when you look at slavery and all of its horror, and all of its wickedness, how can that energy that lasted for a long time and continues to present day, how can something like that continue to exist, especially to the year 3000? Come on. Especially when you realize that everything in this realm, within the universe, this planet, it operates off of certain universal principles. And when you keep distorting it, it's only a matter of time 
when there has to be something cleansed, something has to wash away and something else has to come from it, some, some new form of life. It's no different with this country. There's a lot of signs, people. Right now, I'm here to tell you that when it comes to food, people, especially meat, we are going to go into a lot of scarcity. And then what's going to happen is they're going to replace the scarcity of meat with this new type of meat. And you're going to see people dropping like flies, which it's already happening, but it's going to happen a lot quicker when everything is going to be under some type of GMO or what they call bioengineering. I mean, we happen to be in a time right now where things, it's like it's serious right now. Life is serious. And I know a lot of people want to have fun. I, I, I'm still having fun with life, but I still understand the seriousness when it comes to the spiritual warfare that at every single day, when I go out into the world, anything can happen, but I'm going to stick to my faith and whatever happens from there, so be it. But it's not going to make me unwaver. I can't. Oh, hold on a second here. Check, check, check. All right. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but give me one second. I think it's my battery. Give me one second. All right, people. I almost, my computer complete almost went out. For some reason, my... My battery was out. My apologies. But let's keep it going. I'm glad I caught that. What I was basically alluding to is that this thing with the food is going to become a major problem, people. And I've been watching a couple of uh, brothers on social media talking about this. And they're so on point where you heard me talk about it last week. Um, I briefly touched, touched it a little bit on Monday where, no, no, not on Monday, on Tuesday, where I talked about these guns, right? Last week, I talked about this whole push for gun reform. Well, it's because there's a lot of shit that's going to hit the fan very soon, people. And they want people to be as vulnerable as possible because having weapons gives you an opportunity to fight back. And they know that this is a spiritual warfare at the end of the day. I mean, it is going to be physical, but it's spiritual. And there's a lot of us, a lot of us warriors that we don't even know how powerful we are until the time comes. And I hope that I'm alive to see it. I am hope that I can be a part of it. To be honest with you, I'm looking forward to the battle. Very much so. And not because I want to see people die or want to see, you know, mass hysteria and chaos and calamity. No, it's just it's time. It's time. Because personally, if I have to live another 40 years like this, I will. And I will continue to do what I'm doing and get better at it for the next 40 years. But if I could see this place fall to ashes just like Sodom and Gomorrah, then hey, sign me up. And I'd rather see that within a 40-year period or less, you know what I mean, than not see it at all. But that's not for me to determine. But I'm telling you people, time is nigh. And when you think about Agenda 21, Agenda 21, people, I, I keep stressing this and I'm going to conti continue to do so. This agenda has to bring things to a certain point as far as world control 
by the year 2030. These oligarchs and demons are very dead set on that number and being in a certain position, meeting a certain quota of wickedness by that time, meeting a quota of control. And that control can only come through the depopulation of humanity. And there are people right now, present moment, that are actually advocating for depopulation and are very much for it and think it's the best thing that can happen to the world. And it's not just so-called white people. It's people from all different ethnicities around the world that are collaborating together to make sure that you no longer exist. So that way it makes it easier for them to control and to manipulate and have things in a certain order to benefit their best interests and no one else's. The problem with what they want to do is the most high. It's that omnipotent force that a lot of people think that's not real. Even though that every day you walk outside or every day you wake up, that presence in some way, shape or form is revealing itself to you. And if hopefully if you're smart enough, if you've got it together, you can actually see it and you can actually feel it and you can actually know it's real. But many people don't. And it's unfortunate because we live in a time right now where it's all about me, 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 and them, them, them. <laughs> I want to be called them. <sighs> it's disgusting. You got, if you've seen some of the videos, I'm, you know, I'm just kind of going through like a Rolodex of different images that have uh, gone into my subconscious and conscious mind and that I kind of, you know, basically um, registered, so to speak. I saw this thing where, let me get my phone real quick. Just to kind of talk about how this place has fallen to its demise, especially when you think about Sodom and Gomorrah. And this is a fact, I'm just going to read this, that bathroom sex attack, transgender woman, 18, rapes girl, 10 years old, in female toilets in Morrison's. Katie Deotowski, this is a straight man, people, that's claiming to be a woman, 18 years old. Previously admitted grabbing the victim by her face and forcing her into the cubicle in Ker, Ker Katie Fire Fire, something like that. Well, anyway, I want to read something that the somebody commented on and they left it at the top of the post and I think it was such an awesome comment. So shout out to the brother, uh, Itzy Iziana. Says, for real, this is sad. I wonder what the rainbow communities has to say about this because they don't speak out when they do this stuff like this, but be pointing fingers. <laughs> Facts. That's a sign that that little incident. Well, I shouldn't say it's a little incident. That major incident that is not publicized um, like it is when they want to glorify this behavior is a sign of demise. The fact that right now that this month is celebrating sodomy is a sign of its demise when it comes to this country. It's a sign of its demise, people, because wickedness is becoming the norm. And like when I look at this movie, the fact that every single animal is contaminated with this, it's amazing. It's like we all have PFOA as some, some, you know, some portion of it in our bodies. That's why it's so important to detox 
because there's so many chemicals in the air with chemtrails and so many chemicals in our foods, so many chemicals in our, in, in just the, everything we're exposed to in the products, the physical material products, that detox is a must. It really is. Detox is a must. So, I say all of that to say this. <sighs> Signs of demise, baby. Like, it is, time is nigh for this place. And I can't wait. I'm so passionate about this, people. I can't stand this fucking place. I really can't. And I, I didn't realize it as a kid, but I thought it was just because of racism. I thought that I was uncomfortable in this country because of racism as a kid. And I never felt comfortable because of that. But now as a grown ass man, I know that the reason I don't feel comfortable here is because I'm here for a moment. I'm not even from here. This is not my home. And when I mean by this is not my home, like this is not my planet. I'm just visiting. And I just can't wait to leave this place. But I know that everything happens for a reason. And that reason is there to serve me so that I could serve the most high. And I chose to come here. And I was put here to do certain things and to learn certain things. To make, to, to do it better. And Letta and I talk about it a lot that, you know, she talks about the borrowed time and about how you got to get it right because we got to ascend from this place. This place is wicked, man. And the only way we're going to ascend is by truly living a life that is purpose filled and that has generated a high level of positive interaction and just righteous lifestyle living and just being good people. Goodness is desperately needed in the world today. Why? Because the world is operating on malevolence. It's operating off of that type of energy on a consistent basis. And there's more of that going around than goodness, believe it or not. And I'm not saying this in a way to where I want you to think that I'm pessimistic or doubtful because I know that the most high conquers all when it comes to righteousness. The most high is going to conquer with the righteousness of his heavenly light. And I use his just because of the masculine property and energy and everything it represents. But at the end of the day, I believe that the most high is so much more than what we can even perceive. I believe that right now in the United States, this place is sick. It has cancer all over it. And the tumor is getting big. And eventually, everything is going to shut down. And we have to become aware and prepared for this so that we can continue to persist and exist after this is all said and done. And if, if you people, I'm telling you right now, if you're a gun owner, don't give up your gun rights and don't allow any law enforcement to come to your home to extract those weapons. And I know that many of the people that live by me here in Florida, I know some of the brothers and sisters that um, I know out in Texas feel the same way um, in Montana and certain other places, especially in the South as well. Of course, you know, there's people in New York that feel the same way like this too. <laughs> you know, even though, see, in New York, you probably have a better chance of getting an illegal gun than a, a illegal gun than illegal because of the laws. But especially open, uh, concealed carry, it's like damn near impossible unless you're like a police officer or something or in some, um, some type of uh, government agency. There's a lot of signs that are pointing to the demise of the United States of America. And it's all part of, the, it's, this is a testament 
to the spiritual warfare that's happening right now. And there's not a lot of good when it comes to humanity. And I, and I know that more and more. So when I use the term one third and I've gained that knowledge of what exactly the one third is, I'm seeing it every day, man. I'm seeing that there's a very small population of people that actually know what's real and what's not. And then there's others that either know what's real and what's not, but choose to go with what's not. And then there's others that just don't know. They're just too stupid to figure it out. And I can't hope but to always think about the movie, The Matrix Resurrections, where uh, the architect tells Neo, like, they don't want to be unplugged. They love it here. And they really do. And I know a lot of you that are listening to this show know some of those people that love it here. And what I mean by love it here, I'm talking about the United Serpents of America. They think this is the best place since ever. This is the best place since sliced bread. Best thing that's ever happened is the United States of America. And I'm here to tell you, and I represent the Network of Awareness, which is my entity. So I speak on behalf of my entity. I'm here to tell you, fuck no. There's nothing great about this place and then nothing ever will be great. There's people that live here that come from greatness. And that's it. Nothing else. With that being said, let's take a intermission. I'm not going to do a long intermission because um, I think there's more to discuss when it comes to this. But in the meantime, before I do that, there's something that I want to share in my chat room. And uh, hopefully I can share it and it pulses up with no problem. But I'm going to just share this for now. This link is my contact form. It's one of the tabs on my website. From this link, people, you can actually leave me messages. I've had some of you already do that. Now, this is to share your ideas um, if you want a certain uh, particular topic for a show. But this is also for now until I get the record button up because I have to have that. I have to put that in there from my settings and my dashboard and all that. But for now, if anybody wants to write a testament, put it in there. You know, and if you want to stay anonymous, just put in a fake name. I don't care. Just put in your testament um, and, of course, your email. And if you want to be anonymous, just put it in there. You know, you could put yourself as anonymous and and put, you know, your testament in there. But also, you can use this contact form pretty much for anything you want when it comes to ideas, certain requests, um, even like if you want to be a guest on the show and you have a, a certain product to promote or whatever, or you're an entrepreneur, I have register as a guest that's right next to the contact form. So definitely utilize that if that's something that you're interested in. Today is Testament Thursday. Shout out to Brother Mauricio for um, hooking me up with that title. And... I want to really have the theme of the show to where I'm getting more participation from you brothers and sisters. So if you have a testament, um, you can write it in there until we get it to record. And just for, you know, the purposes of explaining, um, you know, what a testament is, I'm going to give you the definition of it. Um, through Oxford Dictionary, you know, in the English language. But it means um, something that serves as a sign or evidence of a specified fact, event, or quality. So, if you have some sign or evidence of a specified fact, event, or quality, do share it. Because we all have a testament. In our lives, we all are assigned and we are all evidence that the most high 
does exist, brothers and sisters. So let's take this break and I'll be back. You are now tuned in to the Network of Awareness. To the Network of Awareness. Stick it to the man, stick, stick it to the man. Revolutionary, get litty with the fan. Yeah, I be on my grizzly, getting busy for the plan. It ask me why I did it, yo, I did it cause I can't. Nothing gonna stop me finna hit them till they can't. Take it anymore, they gon' give us all the man. Youth gon' rise up, stick it to the man. I'ma rage till I die, cause this is who I am. Get up out my way, I'm coming through with the squad. I could never lose, cause I'm moving with God. Fuck the power, Mr. Main, gonna ruin us all. But there's too many of us, and we all true to the cause. Shake Guevara in my start, I rage against the machine. Fight the power, take tomorrow back and wipe the slate clean. We ain't gon' cower to these cowards, we gon' stand for what's right. Get hype in this mug while we spreading the light. Where my souls is at, get it going, we gon' show them we ain't cheap. Yo, it's over, overthrow they ass. Let them know you mad, bring it to them right where they stay. Don't trip, take the chip, love wins at the end of the day. Stick it to the man, stick, stick it to the man. Revolutionary, get litty with the fan. Yeah, I be on my grizzly, getting busy for the plan. It ask me why I did it, yo, I did it cause I can't. Nothing gonna stop me, finna hit them till they can't. Take it anymore, they gon' give us all the man. Youth gon' rise up, stick it to the man. I'ma rage till I die, cause this is who I am. Fat cats eating while the rest of us starve. We can't have that federal, get ready for war. Can't have fast revolution doing the most. We won't go quiet, don't listen to us, you talk. We done playing with you, it ain't a game, yo, we make it history. Read, baby, fuck the fame, I wanna change the system. Break your prison, got the key for the lock. Won't stop till we free and my people on top. On God, homie, is you really with us or what? You about make a decision, get busy living, show out for the real things. You are what you do, who are you? I'm definitely in a kangaroo. Stick it to the man, stick, stick it to the man. Youth gon' rise up, stick it to the man. Youth gon' rise up, stick it to the man. Youth gon' rise up, stick it to the man. Run up in the Senate, niggas, I sh- Think you getting over on us, but you not The system has been rigged, the government's been bought The house don't represent us, it represents the ops Stand with standing by, take the man right out God damn it, we ain't having what you handing out We want clean air, clean food, water A future for our kids, bitch, this a new order Tear down the wall, love is for all Death to the man in the system we call Freedom ain't free, if you can't breathe Real people stay woke, we ain't gon' sleep Get it crackin', packin' activism A full clip, show them crackers We ain't having all that bullshit The aristocracy is gonna share Starting now, stick it to the man Pull the trigger, blow Stick it to the man Stick it to the man Stick, stick, stick Stick it to the man Stick it to the man Stick it to the man Stick it to the motherfucking man. Please just tell me what's happening to me in plain English with, without the mumbo jumbo. How you do? I've been keeping the faith, winning the race, trying to envision the goal. I've been keeping the pace, look in my face, you can see you my soul. I've been staying the course, racing with fours, keeping my eyes on the road. Nailed my foot to the gas, you know what I want. What's that? I want to tip Beginning, and reading and teaching, we follow them scriptures. Do you feel us? And it's nothing. Why you ducking and dodging them scriptures? He be with us and we love it. Keep the faith cause I love him a lot. Hope my favor be double like lots. Hope I ride till I conquer the top. Said you seen ya, then you seen my pops. Used to wanna do everything my way, because my way was the right way. Then I put away things that were childish. Now it's Yahweh or the highway. Now I'm walking in light with no blips. Standing out like a lunar eclipse. Grab his hand and I tighten my grip. Walking in faith, make sure I don't slip. Make sure I don't slip by peeping the signs. The day of the Lord is a deep in the night. Hand on my sword, cause the kingdom is nigh. The crown is my goal and it keeps me alive. Can't ever let it out my sight. I protect to the death every ounce of fight. Demons pushing and pushing with all their might. But I got in y'all's armor like a knight.
I've been keeping the faith, winning the race, trying to envision the goal. I've been keeping the pace, look in my face, you can see you my soul. I've been staying the course, racing with force, keeping my eyes on the road. Nailed my foot to the gas, you know what I want. What's that? I want it to fold. Man, I love when the spirit be working, cause it shows me when they lurking. Now I step on the neck of the serpent, just to show him I can hurt him. And I'm keeping that boot on his neck, keeping faith and actions in check. I study, I walk, and I rap, walking with Yah, he got my steps. And I'm running with Yahweh, been Yahweh, so I wave like Chow Bay. Pull up in the father's driveway, then I wave like how they. I travel the road, I'm here. My sweat, my blood, my tears. They vanished, they all disappeared. I conquered them all, I conquered my fears. I'm grinding, I'm grinding for tenfold. Keep his word in your faith, it's simple. Did it, day it's a battle, difficult. Yeah, Yahweh was never sinful. Every day I'm just trying to do right. I ain't one that the world's gonna like. A lot's gonna say, oh, he's boring. Small price for a wonderful life. What? I've been keeping the faith, winning the race, trying to envision the goal. I've been keeping the pace, look in my face, you can see you my soul. I've been staying the course, racing with fours, keeping my eyes on the road. Nail my foot to the gas, you know what I want. What's that? I want to fall. But that which he already have, already have. hold fast till I come. Till I come. And he that overcometh, and keepeth my works unto the end. Him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with the rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall I be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Tenfold day, fold day, all grace, all grace, yeah, we, yeah, we, tenfold, tenfold. Ever heard? Attitude reflect, leave, 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 attitude Brick by brick, and I'll be damned if I let you tear it down just because you don't like the way another nigga talk, 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 Music talk, Satan's talk, favorite talk, gateway talk, because talk, music can be a demonic portal. Um, what I mean by that, you know, everybody knows the popular quote, what goes in must come out, all right? Because whatever you feed your mind and soul is going to eventually reflect in your actions and your thoughts. Thoughts, thoughts. It's a fight to the finish, just like Tyson and Silas. The spirit guides me to finish to touch you. I hope you feel it, no doubt, and that's for the pigeons. This right to the feeling of evil, manipulating this generation of children. The things I see in the media got me heated up. Girls barely in their teens used for pedophilia. It's celebrities simply misleading them. How can you live with yourself knowing damn well that you're deceiving them? Feeding them nonsensical bullshit for their mental. Like it's cool to be famous when you know it's detrimental. Y'all convince them that it's hard work, dedication, and God. Last time I checked, we give all our praises straight to Yahweh. Hey, come on. The music is more than just vibes. Keeps us pushing forward every day of our lives. It's my nine to five to do it and do it right. You know I gotta stay on the grind. If deception was the only way that I could reach the me, I would stop rapping in a heartbeat. Music is a way of praising Father Yahweh Elohim. But Babylon tells you chase the dream. Infinite songs for only one third of it is living up to what it's supposed to be. Thank Elohim for the remnant who understands the power of music. The fear of COVID got people so petrified. If one's life lies, y'all are Satan, choose a side. A lot of righteous haters try to play both sides. They lack faith and work, so spirit stays penalized. I realize life is hard without the most high. And he who knows there's much to learn is really wise. Mad grateful to be alive to see the sun rise. Try to stop my vibes, I'm exercising swords and arms. I'm in my prime, righteously prepared to shine and grind. So shock this surprise every time you analyze my rhymes. Cause all of us align with stars you can't even find. I spit that light that leaves chills up in your spine. You could have water, but didn't. Who you kidding? And my fans are in forbidden. Who the fuck is you fibbing? You better think twice before you think I'm tripping on y'all children. If you feel hard, then we gonna make you harder. Hear it? If deception was the only way that I could reach the me, I would stop rapping in a heartbeat. 
Music is a way of praising Father Yahweh Elohim But Babylon tells to chase the dream Infinite songs, but only one third of it is living up to what it's supposed to be Thank Elohim for the one that who understands the power of music influences your behavior or well, people's you, behavior if you allow music to do this it's a difference you know like i said there's people out here who could consume music one way and not well at least they feel that they're not affected by it there's other people who live their life through music like anything that certain artists say is bible to them
get into the show. This is just the beginning. Brothers and sisters, I was thinking, you know, with June being here and uh, Father's Day, I think, uh, being part of this month, even though we know these are not real holidays, I think it's important because of this whole Pride Month that we at least represent some masculine energy that comes from the Most High. So this is called Just Me and My Dad. My brother, take one. Let's go. Shout outs to all the fathers being real men. Shout outs to the mothers, too. First off, I want to give praise to Yah for blessing me with the Father who's played his part and helping me to become who I be. A young man striving to do good deeds. I honor your dad, you've always been there for me, giving me words of wisdom when days ain't sunny. Thanking you and mom for all the love. It's too genuine because it's from up above. Not perfect, but hopefully I've made you proud. A happy parent is what parenthood is all about. Life's never been easy. You've always had to fight and sacrifice so we can have a happy life. All the surgeries was a nasty bite. Tribulations, every man carries a bag of strife. But I can see it's made you full of light. I just pray that your soul can be spared in the afterlife. No need to ask. Right around town, just me and my dad. Our bond gets strong as the moments pass. We laugh and telling jokes and having a blast. Honor, glory, praise to Yah for blessing me with you as my pops. People can throw stones, chuckle, giggle, and laugh. But at the end of the day, this is me and my dad. Today's youth is in trouble, no father in sight. That makes them want to join gangs and constantly fight. Cause they hurting deep down inside. And the beast won't stop until they found a guide. But by then, the damage has already been 
done The streets done raised them, so has his gun Looking up to those that they idolized to pave the way And they praised them as if they're gonna save the day A single mother can't raise a man all alone A household without the father is just not a home Young males carry a lot of problems with them Hard to win when they got so many odds against them Countless males without a father figure Can't sit back and act like it's not an issue Before a handful, the Lord's got a vision So keep your head up and may y'all be with ya No need to ask Right around town, just me and my dad Our bond gets strong as the moments pass We laughing, telling jokes, and having a blast Honor, glory, praise to Yah For blessing me with you as my pops People can throw stones, chuckle, giggle, and laugh But at the end of the day, it's just me and my dad My life almost flushed down the drain My past was vain, and I was so lost in rain But thank you, oh Lord, that I got away Like a getaway slave who unlocked the chains With support from my dad, I'm only getting better Pinning out these rhymes like it's a written letter Hoping it touches somebody once they hear the message And that it keeps them warm like a knitted sweater It's such a blessing, can't thank you enough, Lord Just hoping you can keep me strong on this tough road Praying that you bless Dad with strength and health It can help only you know all the pain he's felt Despite old age, your spirit's still lying like And your faith is still going like a shining light Wouldn't ask for another father when I got you My love for you is permanent just as much as a tattoo No need to ask Right around town, just me and my dad Our bond gets strong as the moments pass We laughing, telling jokes, and having a blast Honor, glory, praise to Yah For blessing me with you as my pops People can throw stones, chuckle, giggle, and laugh But at the end of the day, this is me and my dad Love you, dad Stay safe Stay strong All praise Yahweh This happened. We better hit you some bars to resonate with your soul. Bar Smiths, let's go. Let me talk my shit. American dream is nothing more where I'm a mirage to keep you enslaved, controlled by the synagogues. They gave us a white man with blue eyes, called him God. Malcolm X started to learn before you sabotage. The truth that Muhammad Elijah was a fraud. The whole Islam nation, nothing but a facade. You industry niggas, nothing but some cheap. Rods. Riding balls to Satan, giving his dick a massage. Americans Babylon hitting the camouflage. Brotherhood recruitment, I am the sign of large. Triple scoops of the cold truth, that's how the dies. Taking shots, they even heal, can't dodge. Land of the eagle, robbing you for your morals, more hair and evil. Heavenly surveillance, and every camera can see you. GMO process and everything that defeats you. Wicked ways of the world is here to sneak you. Strange, we trapped in it. Perhaps a tragic tax to form the basis of sanctions. Internet interactions, following your bad habits. No matter how much you make it, they always got their eye on it. It's evident the government don't want a peasant resident become activist artists who wants business or residents. Cause sooner or later, we're residing right next to them, controlling your Mexican, teaching them the world of sin. They only learn the worst of it. Every kid equipped. We bought gold and biochips, slowly we accepted it, pretending it's benefiting, but I didn't want to know what you be heading and what you're getting and selling, cause it all get it, my brother is overprotected, so you always say yes to him, he wants to be respected, when our service has expired, he'll get tired and we all be irrelevant. Yeah. Thank God I'm alive. Hey, on 
the surface he's grinding, but deep inside he's crying, trying to keep his eyes on the prize to keep them aside smiling. All stacked against him, he leans on Yah to not fall to violence. And when he call on Yah, Yah responds with such flawless timing. His environment's filled with zombies, it's not the brightest. Finding ways to escape this place, he gets lost with rhyming. Using his gift to uplift, but also constant reminder that somewhere someone needs his songs to give all praise to Yahweh. Don't worry, just don't worry. Yahweh, then Yahweh's gonna bring us home. Hey, got the heart of a lion, armor all on his body. This shoot's the hardest thing ever, but still he costs the mileage. Deep in the trenches where wickedness prospers all the time. It's like the good gets punished just for doing what is smart and righteous. As the stars are aligning, y'all is calling his finest. All united, not divided. Tough road, but I think I, I'm alive. changing conditions within today's society and the constant new trends influencing cultures can become overwhelming to say the least but no worries the network of awareness podcast radio show brings peace of mind in these challenging times follow us on your favorite podcast listening app and join our community of network of awareness at networkofawareness.com
Welcome back, brothers and sisters, to the Network of Awareness. This is Season 4, Episode 24, Signs of Demise. And as you can see in the artwork, uh, it is Testament Thursday. So if you want to leave a testament uh, for next week, the link is in the uh, chat room on the networkofawareness.com forward slash contact. And that's for anything that you want to share, any ideas, any um, ideas for episodes you want to hear. Like if you want me to talk about a particular subject, you could put it in there until it can be recorded, which I'll have the record button to make it easier. And that way we can hear people's testament. But I can also read people's testament in the meantime. And I believe that whether it's being said by the person or being read, it's still the message that um, is most important and what's being said more importantly. I like the name, the United Serpents of America, because I feel like it is a great representation to what this country really represents. This country is very poisonous, like a snake. And it has no emotions whatsoever. It only knows what it knows. And the fact that we have a small group of people in this country that are waking up to the reality that this country is not all that is cracked up to be is something to be grateful for because you would think with all of the different um, tools at their disposal and all of the different psychological manipulation that has had success for them, especially when it comes to Kaka 19, Kaka 19, I said it. Matter of fact, people, next week I will be doing a Kaka 19 episode and it's probably going to be maybe Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm not sure yet, but we will have a Kaka 19 episode. I think it's about that time again, right? What do y'all think? But in the meantime, the United Serpents of America, Signs of Demise, is all about how this country is slowly but surely going to shit. <laughs> It really is. And you know who's recognizing this more than anybody else? A lot of Caucasian European Americans. They are very much realizing that even to a certain degree, white privilege still exists, but it's not as powerful as it used to be. And the reason being is because when it comes to the agenda for this future significant depopulation that they want to successfully complete, it doesn't matter who it is because we're all cattle. We're all sheep as far as their perception of us. And when I see them um, say them, I'm talking about the wicked forces that are here, people. And if you're not you know, aware of this by now, you need to start doing some research because there's so much information on the internet nowadays where you don't even really have to go and seek this type of information or get it from specific places like it has to, like it used to be in back in the days. Like you used to have to go to seminars or, you know, have certain um, people that had these small groups that were doing things independently to get access to certain information or you would have to go to the library and go into the archives because there's a tremendous amount of information within libraries. The problem is though with libraries when it comes to our government is that if you start picking certain books that goes into a, I believe what is called the register and now that everything since everything is now digital depending on what books you're getting that's going to be recorded by the FBI you know, and by other institutions secretly. And they will be monitoring you based on the information you gather. That's why I personally wouldn't want to go to a library. But if that's your only resource, then by all means, um, if you're going to take a book out, be careful or just read the book 
from time to time at the library until you finish it. Because that's real, people. They track people like that. Depending on what books you read, they will they will flag your ass. And um, they'll, be, they'll be keeping tabs on you. Like they keep tabs on all of us, but I mean specific, more deliberate. Like focus a lot of attention on you based on the information that you're gathering in the in the books and the content that you're you know you're reading in these books. So just keep you know be aware of that. That's something I wanted to tell people. I don't know if some of you probably already know that. Just be careful if you like to go to the library because it does have library has a wealth of knowledge within these books. But um. Oh, I'm looking at the chat room now. <laughs> Thanks, brother, man. Another Kaka 19 episode. And that's exactly how I'm going to spell it, too, with the Ks. Um, I was going to do the Cs, but uh, I'm going to do it with the Ks. And then the one nine. And hopefully it doesn't get flagged. But i tell you one thing. That episode will not be distributed to YouTube like this one is. <laughs> that episode... Because this episode is light, you know, I'm like, I'm really talking about certain things, but we're not going too deep. But when it comes to that, it doesn't even matter. You have to be very cryptic. And you know, brothers and sisters, that um, I've had to learn that the hard way. Um, and I wish I would have known about how to be more cryptic when talking about Gaka 19, because boy, it would it I probably would have got I would have had a lot of downloads. <laughs> and it my my rankings would have been a lot better as a podcaster in the podcast industry. And I would have been able to get even, you know, like more opportunities for sponsorship through like Spreaker that they would offer or something like that. But unfortunately you know, we have to work a little bit harder to get to where we want to be. And that's all by design too, right? But if I would have known the level of censorship that this country was going to go into at this time when this first came out and as it persisted to go from illness to um, testing and then eventually to inoculation, oh boy, would I have approached this microphone completely different. And it wasn't for the purposes of to try to sell out and be like, oh, you can't be real and say what you want to say. No, but if I can say what I want to say cryptically. And that's why I do what I do. And I want to get better at it as far as for these free episodes. But that's why with the TV network, it's like I don't have to do that. I could just be me. You know what I'm saying? And I don't have to worry about ruffling feathers unless I'm going to ruffle the feathers of those that watch it, but they can do something real quick. They cannot watch it anymore and I pay for it. And I'm cool with that too. But if I would have known the level of censorship that had come to this country on a level that we've never seen before, it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing how it was such a unified effort of different corporations and industries all unifying to keep things on the hush-hush and continue to basically say something that was really brand new, that they had it under control with telling you that it was real. And that's all I'm going to say about that because we'll talk more about that on the Gaka 19 episode. Today's show is really just to focus on the theme, Testament Thursdays, and for me to give you a testament. So let me give you a testament. Let me give you some evidence to what I've experienced when it comes to the United Serpents of America. This is going to go very like, it's going to be simple, but it's deep at the same time. I had a situation Back in 1999, right, where I basically had a moment of weakness, but it was also a moment of 
let's just call it an awakening or epiphany. And it had to do with drugs in the, in, in the, in the sense of hustling and selling drugs. And I was already, you know, into my early 20s. I think I was 20 at the time or 21. And I had gotten back into it for a short stint. And it was very lucrative. But I went to a party, long story short, uh, some DT, which my stupid friend at the time, uh, who basically parked his car right where all the cops were at at this party. It was like a rave. And I had uh, marijuana in my in my boots, but I had it hidden very well. And, and they searched me three times and couldn't find it. But they found drugs on all my friends, right? Because my friend was stupid. He had marijuana in his lap and he's trying to like package it while he's in the car at this event, like a straight idiot, just dumb. And everything happens for a reason, right, people? So he gets the, the DT or whatever that was walking around on, at, the, at, the, at the parking lot, nabbing people up. There's people getting arrested inside by undercovers and all that. It's like some 21 drum, uh, Jump Street shit. And they searched me three times. This is what's crazy, though. This is the United Serpents of America for you. The cops basically told me, you're going to jail. But I was like, why? You know what I'm saying? There's like, you have all this money. But I was like, I have a job. And I did. I worked at a bank. So I'm like, I work at a bank. I could prove that. I was like, they was like, we're going to arrest you anyway. And something in my spirit was like, let me, I'm done. Like, I'm done doing this. Like, this is not for me. I'm exhausted from this, to be honest with you. I'm tired of being paranoid, you know? And, in my, and believe it or not, my paranoia is what really kept me to be successful, if you even want to call it success, in distributing, you know, different chemical substances or whatever. And I basically gave up the trees. And what they did was they combined everybody's trees on me and tried to hit me with all these felonies, which they did. And then they boiled it down to one. And I tell you this story because I went, instead of going 10 years in jail for a first time offense for marijuana that wasn't even all mine and the most high kept me safe enough to not go to jail, they still put me on this crazy type of probation. It was the type of probation period where it's like, it's set up in a way to where you almost like, it's, it's, it's like guaranteed to bring you back to jail or to jail for the first time, which would have been my situation if that would have happened. But somehow, some way, the Most High just made that probationary period work in my favor, even when I wasn't doing the right things. Like I was still smoking weed, but I never got tested. And I had a probation officer that tested everybody. But one thing I did is that I had a job, so I would deliberately dress up very professionally every time I came in there, like I was about that business. And, you know, perception is everything. So I think after this three-year period and the fines that get paid and all of this, I'm thinking, okay, I'm in the clear of, of something that could have been really bad. So after that, I'm living my life. This thing is on my record. It's, it's hindered me sometimes. For, and I don't even think it really hindered me. I think the only reason I didn't get those jobs because of that was because it wasn't meant for me to be there, looking back on it retrospectively. But the testament is this, is that there was a time where when I moved to Florida, Okay, this is years later, people. Okay, I'm already in my 40s. You know what I'm saying? A dad. I'm in Florida trying to basically live, start a whole new life. And when you, when you move to a different state, and many of you that have done this already, you, you know what it is. Some of you are going through it now. Some of you have gone through it recently. And some of you have done it years ago, like me. When I came to move here to Florida... I had to change over eventually my license plates and I got Florida plates instead of New York plates. 
Now, I could have kept the New York plates, but I wanted to get the plates in Florida, right? And I wound up not being able to get a Florida license when I went to the DMV. Everything was going well until it came to the license transfer. Lo and behold, I'm like, why can't I get, you know, my, my license here in this state? Like, I'm good. I don't have a suspended license in New York. There's like, nah, you don't got a suspended license in New York. You have a suspended license in the state of New Jersey. And I was like, I never lived in the state of New Jersey. It was like, well, it says here that you have, you have to call this number. So I called the number and I find out that I do have a suspension on my license from the very county, which was one of the most racist counties in, in New Jersey, which is a very racist state. Um, it's called Morris County and it was Morris Township. And um, this Morris Township place, they basically did something where because I think, honestly, I think it was to keep track of me. What they did was because I was moving to a different state, they put this suspension on my license based on this arrest and probation and, and, and conviction of a felony. I want you to really hear what I'm saying. This is how crazy it is. I never drove. I never lived in, in, in Jersey. So there's no reason for me to have a license on file. But somehow, some way, with the laws that these demons have in their possession to pretty much fuck you over, they tracked me because I now had to pay a certain amount of money, which I believe was $175 or $200, something to that degree. And I had to pay that fee in order for that suspension to be lifted so that I can have a license in another state. Ain't that some shit? And the first thing I thought of is that these motherfuckers was keeping track of me. And that was the best way to know not only that I, uh, that I left the state that I was living in for pretty much most of my life, but also to know what state that I moved to. Now, I say all this, this is my testament to say that you know, there are dark forces that are working against us people that they really don't, because we all serve a purpose, all of us. But you have to remember, because our purposes are so great in our, in our individual uh, lives, which we are all expressions of the most high, there are going to be forces that are going to try to block you from fulfilling that. And that's what I felt like. But every single time, man, it was like, it was like, I, it, it, it was spiritually protected. I had a situation in regards to this too that I didn't even mention. I forgot to mention in my story is that I had to do like, I think it was 150 or 100. Something to, I, man, it was, it was a lot of hours. I know that. It was a lot of hours. And they wanted me to put all these hours in for community service. They hit me with a bunch of stuff because they didn't get to put me in jail. They wanted to put me in jail for, for a seven to 10 year period, which I think would have given me the opportunity to be released in five years on good behavior. You know how the system works. But it was a first time offense and they was trying to lock me up, people. And meanwhile, other people, other kids, they were getting off with uh, what's called PTI, pretrial intervention. And nothing goes on your record with that. And they, they were getting caught with cocaine and all that. But here I am being attacked by this district attorney called Weber. And he was just a wicked dude. He just had an aura about him. But long story short, 
the community service that I had to do, which was hours, people. I think it was like 150 hours. So I got linked up with a dude at, um, it was like, um, it's like a certain type of assisting living center community organization. They were a nonprofit and they had a center for this uh, assisted living. And it, you know, the the maintenance guy was this white dude. I can't remember his name. I think it was James or something, but really cool dude, man. And basically, he, like, we, me and him hung, hung out. Like, I was supposed to work. And, you know, I was supposed to do basically whatever handiwork he wanted me to do for the whatever amount of hours I was there. But instead of having me work, he had me help him out with little things here and there, but it was more of a hangout session. He would have me, he would let me play pool. And then when I would do that and he would sign off on the hours. So let's say I was there for an hour hanging out. He would put down that I was there for five or six or seven hours, like within the time frame. And doing that on a consistent basis, those hours went by so fast, people. Especially on if he had me meet on uh, meet with him on a weekend, and they counted that. Ooh, that was a good eight eight hours. So, I probably did out of that hundred plus hours. I probably literally actually served my community for my community for I would say, hmm, let's say I, I'm gonna be conservative with it and say twenty. I probably actually literally worked 20, but that is the proof that the most high does exist. Cause I'm telling you, man, a situation that could have been really bad and it was all set up to try to get me locked up. All set up, but it didn't happen at all. And what was interesting is that when I had to go and call the board, which I had to call this phone number to make sure that I was in the clear of this probationary period. The one thing that they did have on me was the fact that I got um, a ticket for urinating at like two o'clock in the morning on a street in the Bronx because there was no bathrooms available because everything was closed. And that cops just happened to be driving by and saw me by a uh, ice cooler machine at a bodega. It was closed. <laughs> So she had mentioned that to me, but she's like, besides that, you know, she made a joke about it. But if they wanted to people, they could have used that as a violation. That's how crazy it is. But obviously she was like, you know, obviously that's, that's not something we're going to use against you or whatever. And they kept it moving. And then I got off probation now, but now I had that on my record. And what's crazy is that that particular sentence, uh, now that they have the laws in New Jersey where marijuana is legal for recreation, um, they have to turn over all these cases. So you have the ability to get your expungement done for free, but it takes about a year. So little food for thought, anybody who has any type of marijuana convictions in the state of New Jersey, I'm not guarantee you that they will drop your conviction, but you do have the opportunity by going on their website and, and filing your, uh, I forgot what they call it, but I guess it would be like a claim to your expungement. You know what I mean? It's very possible. So brothers and sisters, we're in a time right now where the United States of America, it's really being exposed for all that it is. And this, what's interesting is that now Biden, who might not even really be the actual real Biden, right? That might be a clone. Yeah, I saw that video where he was going into like an Uber car. It's, it's quite interesting to see that. But we all know that cloning does exist. I mean, that's not a big secret anymore. But... The fact that in his short term of presidency, right? I think he's on his third year, people, right? Something like that. Maybe third, second. I don't even know, but 
whatever time frame ever since the pandemic came, it's like this dude has been accelerating all of the uh, like exploitation of what the United States represents. So it's almost like it's pretty much a wrap. He's pretty much has made sure that America is not going to exist too much longer, even if he doesn't become president again. He's already put a lot of things in, in place or things into, put things into actions to make sure that this country is going to fall to its demise. And that's one of the reasons why they're focusing on this gun control people, because they're about to do some shit to this place, people, that is going to blow your fucking mind. And we just got to be very, very aware, very righteously prepared and have a very strong connection to the most high spiritually, because if not, it's going to be bad, but it will get better. That I do know. But the United States is done, man. It's too much, especially with this food thing right now. With the even with the whole entire, not even just the food, just people, this supply chain thing, it's not going nowhere, man. Like this is, we're in, we're in the precipice of total chaos, right there. It, it's like that, and then I'm gonna end the show after I say this. Where it, you know where we at right now, and I'm gonna give you a great analogy to where we're at to end the show. If anybody's ever ridden a roller coaster or rode a roller coaster where it's like the old school ones especially, right? Those are pretty much some of the most fun ones. But if you know, like any roller coaster, you have to go up the track and it pulls the track, the roller coaster up the track and it's going... Well, where we're at is when it reaches the top and it moves forward, especially if you're in the first cart and it moves forward. And there's like that, I'm going to say, what, three to four second delay where it goes and then it goes and it starts rolling. And it's like that three to, to a two to four second delay where it's that anticipation that adrenaline is starting to just fill up in your body. And then it drops like, yeah, and then you're like, ah, well, that's where we're at. We're at that. This country, before it falls to a demise, that's where we're at. We're right at that spot. We're at that spot that it's like, is right about to fall and we're anticipating it. It's like we know it's coming, but it hasn't happened yet. So brothers and sisters, when you live in the present, there's always an opportunity for a new beginning. And like I always say, brothers and sisters, to end my show, um, we're in some spiritual warfare right now. And it's just very important that we are constantly feeding our minds with the right energy and the right information and the right knowledge and the right foods and the right people. Because this is the time to be righteous in all aspects of our lives. No matter how hard it is, we got to work harder and harder to get better and better so that we can serve the most high better. And I know that lately I may have not been talking about certain things that are going on in society and culture and really digging down deep into it. But I think it's more important that for these last couple of weeks that I've been focusing on things like universal principles and faith and gratitude and knowing and all these other things in regards to belief systems and spirituality. But at the end of the day, I'm compelled to talk about this because I'm experiencing it. And I'm just want to be able to stay on that righteous tightrope and maintain balance the best way I know how and have a lot of endurance to maintain the strength of the strain that I have to go through in order to maintain that balance. 
So brothers and sisters, I really want to thank you for tuning into this live broadcast um, for Testament Thursdays. So don't look for the light at the end of the tunnel because the light is and always will be within you. Light up that tunnel, brothers and sisters, and you'll get through the darkness. You'll find your way. You don't need to wait for the light at the end of the tunnel because the light is within you. So I give all praise to the Most High and I say peace, love, and light. And let's hopefully do it again tomorrow on Faith Over Fear Fridays. We're going to talk about spiritual currency. Barakatah. <laughs>